Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to assemble the TH3D Tough Extruder. Let's get to it. The Tough Extruder is an extruder we sell that's based off of the E3D Titan open source design. This is a really nice extruder because it's cost effective and offers three to one gearing ratio. So you get a lot more torque when driving your filament. This extruder is also really nice for doing flexible filament because it has a very tight guided filament path. And it also offers a lot of drive strength to power through any issues that your hot end might have that would stop up a normal extruder. For example, if you get a partial jam and the heat break, this extruder usually can overpower that and keep printing as if nothing happened. I really like these extruders because they offer a lot more reliability than your standard ones that drive the filament directly off the motor shaft. The extra torque allows for not only more reliable printing, but also faster printing when you upgrade your hot end to something like our high flow kit or an E3D Volcano, those types of products. So the assembly is very straightforward. I'm gonna demo it with a bracket that is used to attach this to the Ender 5 Plus, but this guide is to show you how to assemble it and it's applicable to any printer that you're installing it on. Some printers might require an adapter bracket like the Ender 5 Plus or something to mount it differently on the printer versus the stock extruder. There are many mounting options out there for these tough extruders and they're compatible with any of the E3D Titan designs that you'll find on Thingiverse or any other STL sharing site. So let's show you how to assemble it. It only takes a couple of minutes and then you're ready to print. Aside from the physical assembly, you just have to update your firmware to change the E steps from whatever your default is to 463 steps per millimeter. And that number is calculated for your standard printers that use 1 16th stepping on their drivers, which is what most printers use. If you do have a printer that's using 1 32nd stepping, you would just double that number. Or if you're using 1 8th stepping, you would cut it in half. Some printers might require the motor direction to be reversed, and we do have an option for that in our firmware. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward installation. You basically assemble it, do the firmware changes, and you go back to printing. So let's get to the assembly. So here in front of me, we've got all the parts we're gonna need to assemble the Tough Extruder. Now your kit will come with more parts. I have the ones pulled out for what I'm going to need to assemble for my particular machine. Now, obviously this is off the machine. You are going to have something in between the motor and the extruder when you mount it to your printer. I have a mounting bracket here for an Ender 5 Plus. So I'm gonna use this for the video demonstration. Now when you purchase the kit from us, it does include Allen keys but I'm just going to be using my own little precision screwdriver set as it's a little quicker to use than Allen keys. So you're gonna start off by removing the screw that's holding the lid to the body. Now, if you look here on the lid in the body, there's a little recess on both of them and that's where these bearings go. Now these bearings might be pre-installed when you get it from us, but in case they're not, I'm just gonna show you, you put them in and just press them in. Same thing on the lid. And then we're going to go ahead and put the body onto our motor. So imagine this is on your printer and your printer might have a printed bracket like I'm using here for the demonstration, or your printer will have a metal one that's on it existing. All you need to do is take the short M3 screw that's included in the kit and put it through the hole right here. And when you're assembling this, you got to take into account where the filament is going. The filament exits this side of the extruder. So on this particular machine bracket, I know I want my filament going this way because the filament sensor is here, so we're feeding in through this. So make sure to take into consideration which way the filament's going on your machine. So for this particular one, I'm gonna want to put it right here. So we have our screw in here, we have our bracket that is for the printer we're putting this on and the motor. So go ahead and screw this into the body and just snug it up, don't over tighten it. We do want this to be able to be moved a little because we're going to have to adjust this. The next step is we have to put the actual drive gear onto the motor shaft. Now, if you look at this drive gear, you'll notice that there is a set screw and this set screw needs to be towards the motor. So meaning when I put this on the shaft here, the set screw is closer to the motor. It should be on this way not the other way around. So go ahead and 
put this on. And usually what I'll do is do a check to see how far this needs to be spaced away from the motor. And if we look here, you can see that this drive gear is sitting a little low. So we're going to go ahead and secure the main drive gear on the shaft and make sure it's a little pulled up so these sit flush. So I'm just going to pull it up a little bit with my finger. So there's a gap between the gear and the motor. And then go ahead and get your Allen in there and tighten it down. So give it a little tug, make sure that's set up in there. I'll usually go back and give it one more turn. And then let's check to see if we got it at the right height. So put our gear back on, rotate the body. So the gears mesh nice and tight like that. And you can see here they're, they're flush at the top now. So we can go ahead and move forward with the installation. So make sure everything's all lined up. You should be able to see here, I had this bracket a little bit skewed so we can't actually see the screw hole so I'm going to go ahead and line that up and we can see the threaded part into the motor now we want to make sure that these are meshing you see how these are kind of loose we want to just push on here and then that will make the gear tighten up so the next thing to do is put the guide arm on the shaft just like this and if you notice there's a little nub, you want the nub facing this little cutout here because we now need to take the nut and thread it onto the thumb screw. Put the included spring on the screw and then put it in like this. The spring should go over the little nub and the nut should fit right in there. So that's how it should look at this point. Make sure that this is still tight. You can see it is. If it's not, just push on the casing this direction and that will force the gears to mesh better. So the next thing we need to do after that is put the guide in. And then we need to assemble the PTFE fitting. On uh, these, it's a two part fitting. This plastic piece goes into the brass collar here. Just like that and then you press this into the recess here. Now take the lid, make sure the bearing is in place here and put the lid on the top of the extruder and make sure it sits flush. Everything should be flush all the way around, just like so. And now we're gonna take the shorter M3 screw that we took out of this location and put it into the cover and screw that in. And when I tighten this, it made the whole body move. So go ahead and just grab it. And you see here how it moves. Make sure that's not like this. You want it like this. And you can verify that by, if you touch the gear here, it shouldn't have play with it. You can see here, it's staying put. So now we need to put the other three screws in. These screws we're gonna do tight. This one we're gonna do just until it stops because if you over tighten this, you can crush the bearings that hold this drive wheel. And then for the last one here, remember do not over tighten this one. So once you start screwing this in, you start feeling some resistance, stop, and then check to make sure that this still moves freely. So you can see this is moving smoothly. If you over tighten this, what you'll see is this will bow down quite a bit and you need to untighten that. This little bit of deflection here in the lid is normal, but we wanna make sure that this is nice and tight, which it is, and that this moves smoothly. So now the last thing is included in the kit is a piece of PTFE tube. I'm not going to use it on this one because we have a filament sensor that goes here, but if you have this mounted on your printer, and you're feeding directly into this, I would recommend putting a piece of PTFE into the arm here. That's what this hole is for. This will accept a standard piece of four millimeter PTFE tubing, and there is a small piece included in the kit. So I'll show you this with a piece I have laying around. This just presses into here, so you can see you have a nice guided path, but I don't need it on the Ender 5 Plus. Now, when you put the PTFE tubing into this, you wanna make sure that it goes all the way up in 
to the extruder until it stops because the tube's actually going to go up into that little black guide piece that we installed. Once this is installed, you go ahead and take the included clip and put this between the plastic piece and the brass piece on the fitting. This will lock the tubing in and it will not let it go. And that's it. The only thing you need to do after this is you might have to reverse the direction of the extruder motor in your firmware, which we have in our unified firmware. And the steps per millimeter for this, for a standard machine, is 463 steps per millimeter. The tension adjustment is right here. And if you notice, there's like a little bar graph here that looks almost like a signal strength indicator. And this is to use the position of the nut to determine how much tension you have. So when you first start off, I'd recommend so when you first start off, I would recommend backing it to the midway point and then either adjusting less or more from there. Now this extruder can put an intense amount of pressure on the filament, so you don't always want to set it to the max position. As you can see, the spring gets very compressed and this becomes very hard to pull back. So I'd recommend you guys staying in the middle position here and then adjusting from there. If you do over tension the arm here, it can flatten the filament out because it puts that much pressure on it. But at this point, we're ready to put this back on the printer and go ahead and print with it after we make the firmware changes. So as you can see there, there's a few parts to this extruder, but once it's put together, it runs really smooth and it's pretty easy to use. And that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoy this extruder and I hope you guys enjoy the assembly video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below or you can contact our support team by going to contactus.th3dstudio.com. And as always, thanks for watching and happy printing.